Casey, you know, Hannah itself is actually a uh, plant. And um, we've got this cool guide here from uh, Dr. Carver Jones that uh, we're gonna go, go through. So um, if we can uh, look at it, it's kind of used on rice for the weddings in India, the Middle East, and Africa. So as you can see, the, the designs can range from really intricate designs to simple designs, um, but they use them as head of night, the night of celebration. Um, sometimes both men and women have a night of honey just before their marriage. So they be, be decorated in these designs on their hands, feet, sometimes in the very parts of their body. And um, there's also a tradition of uh, kind of supposed to be lucky for the guys to be adorning the body, like as you see with red jewelry every wedding day. And um, lots of different uh, religious groups and cultural groups use henna um, for their bridal nights. A small tree that grows in many countries. It grows in North uh, in East Africa, the Middle East, and South Asia. Um, there are many words for henna. So you have uh, mandi, mendi, campfire, and kopher. Um, the word of the art form is the same as the word for the plant. So you often hear it, the henna plant and henna body art. So you hear the forms are usually the same. And um, you get the best stain concentrations in henna because henna likes to be dry. The, the higher the concentration of dye within the side leaves actually is during, like, like you'll get during a drought. Um, so here's some information and just, you know, some technical information about how henna will benefit at nighttime temperatures below 50 degrees Fahrenheit. Henna will thrive in the summer heat if it's really hot, um, you know, growing conditions and such. Right there. And all this information, too, I got from Dr. Cartwright Jones. It's on henapage.com, so she's kind of encompassed a really cool PowerPoint presentation for everybody to use. Now, these are just variations in color. It, um, Hannah has lasso, and she breaks down the chemical components of it. She's done a lot of scientific research on Hannah and its, um, its cultural uses and um, the science behind it. It's a red-orange dye which binds to the keratin which is in our skin is the reason why it actually dyes it. So if you'll probably notice I've got like little red tips on my fingernails. Is the henna actually growing out on my fingernails? Mm -hmm. You can dye your hair with it. Um, it also stains our skin. So um, Lawson, which is the red dye which is contained inside the red dye, uh, the leaves, bonds to the keratin which is in our hair, skin, and nails. And um, it says it will safely uh, stain a red to red orange color, but you can see that at the bottom there's different varying degrees of henna color. The longer you leave the henna on your skin, the better it will actually stain. And, um, you know, henna from hot climates make the darkest stains. Like often you'll find henna from uh, like Rajasthani henna or Moroccan style henna. Um, really these really dark, amazing stains because they come from like hotter, drier regions. And uh, there's a nice example of a mature henna stain on the skin. It's got this beautiful red color to it. And the um, reason why henna stains best on like the hands and feet, you know, the soles of our hands and feet is because the skin is actually thickest there. So the thinner your skin is, the least it will actually stain because there's diff the, the layers of skin vary on different parts of the body. So if you were to try a henna on someone's face, you may get a, a faint henna stain. Um, but if you kind of, you know, someone's hands, because, of, you know, the callus, they're thicker, you'll get a deeper henna stain. And uh, the henna stains exfoliate from the skin within seven to 30 days. On average, the average henna stain will last about seven to 10 days on most people, somewhere up to two to three weeks, depending on, you know, your aftercare and how you take care of it and everyone else's uh, exfoliation process. It's important to know that henna is not the same thing as a tattoo. You'll see that I stress that I don't call it henna tattoos, I call it henna body art for a reason, because there is a difference. Um, tattoos are actually impregnating, they're implanting the dye underneath their layers of skin permanently. Henna just lays on top of the skin and it stains you know, the various skin layers. Um, so there is a difference. So if you hear people calling it henna tattoos, it's kind of a misnomer. People think that it's a tattoo and they expect it to be like a tattoo. It's not painful, it doesn't hurt, and it's not actually permanently leaving a design on anyone's skin. Natural henna doesn't do that. Um, so it just kind of goes over the differences that tattoos are made by piercing the skin and putting pigment under those layers of skin. 
Henna stains the outermost layer of the skin. It does not pierce the skin, and it does not hurt. It feels cool and pleasant on the skin. What we often tell children during fairs and festival time that kind of feels like cool pudding on the skin. It's the weirdest little mm -hmm. reference that we use. <laughs> that it's actually a cool, refreshing experience to put henna on the skin. It's a natural coolant, so that's why it always kind of feels cold on the skin. Mm -hmm. And it's a, it's a pleasant experience. And uh, that the henna will stain, will fade the outermost layers of skin as they exfoliate and as the tattoos are permanent. You can exfoliate all day long with your body poof and you will have a tattoo for the rest of your life and it will just naturally fade and exfoliate away. And can dark skinned people use henna? Absolutely. This is kind of like a strange little myth that I get asked a lot um, during my fairs and the festival during the summer season. Like people with you know dark complexions have asked me like, oh, can I get henna too? Or do you have any henna in different colors? Henna stains any complexion, any fresh natural henna powder can stain anybody's skin from the darkest ebony, you know, to the fairest light colored skin. This is the way that it reacts to the skin naturally. So people of all skin colors can use henna, and this is a great example of a woman with this beautiful brown skin here. You can, see, you can clearly see the henna stain on her skin. She didn't have to use any chemical laden black henna to get a beautiful henna design on her skin. It stains on anyone of any color. And this is the science behind it. So this is like a cool little, uh, reference here. Just imagine the different layers of your skin and the green bump on top kind of represents the layer of henna paste, like as if you were piping your design on top of a cake. So the henna, where the skin is the thinnest, like diagram of an ear skin, would only be about seven layers deep. However, like the hand skin on the right there is about 22 layers deep. So you can imagine the different concentrations of color that you'll get from different parts of the body and you know how quickly they will also exfoliate during that time. So when you put henna paste on the skin, the lost one penetrates and saturates the top layer of the skin cells just as top, just a drop of ink penetrates and saturates layers of paper. You know, like if you ever written on paper with like a gel ink pen and it kind of soaks and you know goes through there. It's kind of the same premise. And henna stains will darken. In the first 48 hours after application, the most saturated part of the henna stains oxidize or darken. Henna will actually oxidize after it's been exposed to oxygen in the air. So there's this funny little, you know, experiment by Don, my twin sister's over there. She knows very well that I am slept with henna on, like a crazy person, I'm sure. And as I've removed the henna, the henna is bright orange. It develops into a deep red, reddish brown color stain after it's been exposed to the oxygen and is allowed to darken naturally. So within the first 24, 48 hours, first one to two days, your henna stain will actually darken. So everybody who decides to get a henna design done today, you'll notice after you remove the paste that the paste will be bright orange at first. It's natural, it's supposed to look like that. And over the next two, you know, one to two days, you know, everyone else can, you know, vouch that it actually, it will darken naturally on its own, which is a, a neat little thing. And why does your henna fade? Everybody's skin exfoliates, it's a natural process. So henna stains appear to fade away within seven to 30 days, depending on everybody's chemistry, everybody's bodies are different. People may exfoliate more, you know, from their own beauty regimens or, you know, skin conditions. And the stained skin cells exfoliate and are replaced by new, you know, unstained cells growing underneath the skin. That's just the natural exfoliation process. As your new skin is being developed underneath, it, Sloths, your old skin sloughs off is why you have the appearing of the fading design on your on your body and henna stains fingernails as i've showed you um henna strengthens skin and fingernails and deters drying and cracking so it's actually a natural kind of medicinal purpose that people have done for a long long time in many countries is that they'll, they'll stain their fingernails naturally with henna so um Henna has some antibacterial, antifungal properties. So people who have suffered from like a fingernail or a toenail fungus, they'll actually apply henna as for medicinal use as a natural product. Henna is also a sunblock. This is a natural thing. If you've ever gotten henna done in the summertime, I've had clients contact me back and they get a ghosting effect. I've had it done to myself as well. I'll henna my hand, I'm driving all summer long, it finally fades and I have a white, like resist pattern <laughs> left behind on my hands. So it leaves a ghosting, a ghosting effect because henna is also a natural sunblock because it's saturating your skin cells and it, uh, protecting it from the UV rays that uh, 
that the UV, UV rays can't penetrate the skin cells and darken them. So it's a natural sunblock as well. So um, this is kind of like an interesting, you know, neat little process. Henna stains hair reddish and makes it stronger and silkier. It's a natural conditioner. Henna is effective against ringworm, dandruff, and other fungal diseases. So that goes also into the long history of medicinal purposes that henna has been used for. Anybody varying from different colored hair tones, like, you know, my beautiful silver hair that my daughter likes to try to pull out, are bright red. The rest of my hair is dark brown, so I have this beautiful auburn color. So you get these natural variations of highlight colors in your hair um, from using henna. So anybody from blondes to, you know, raven black hair can use henna to naturally condition their hair, let it grow out a little bit longer. Um, because it does the same thing, it bonds to the keratin that's in your hair, it actually thickens your hair a little bit. Mm -hmm. So if you're suffering from like weak um, hair, thin hair, it actually thick thickens and strengthens it a little bit naturally. Where so it's considered a natural dye. Where do you get something like, do you have to actually make it yourself? Or do you yeah, you can make natural kind of The piece. actual dye though for hair, that's pretty, is that like a different recipe or does it actually follow along with It's the same thing? recipe we usually use for body art. Right? Yeah. And where does henna grow? Henna grows usually, as you can see on the map here, henna grows best in the hot, dry zone from the Atlantic to the Pacific, the ye yellow and orange areas of the map. Um, henna will die in cold weather, and henna gets stale during transport, so henna traditions are primarily in hot, dry areas. Henna, since it is a plant, is perishable. Just as you would have like a can of vegetables, there is an expiration date. <laughs> henna has an expiration date as well, yes. So if I have like a little henna kit and I haven't used it for like a couple of years, is it probably... It's probably bad. Okay. It, it may stain light or not at all. Um, but henna is a perishable product. So when I make, mix my henna, I often import fresh henna paste from reputable uh, suppliers where I import it myself. I mix my paste in the large batches, I comb them in happy little cones, and I freeze it. It's good for almost up to a year in the freezer because it is perishable. Um, the henna stain will demise after a certain period of time in the paste. So if I were to keep taking that same cone and keep taking it out of the freezer or the fridge and trying to use it every single time additionally, the henna stain would be lighter and lighter and lighter. It just would be ineffective after a certain point in time. So that's when I mean, you get those like henna cones that are sitting there in lots of different markets or you get the henna kits and you don't know if there's any preservatives or dyes or chemicals that are keeping the henna. Henna, oh. henna naturally fades, um, it's perishable, and it doesn't take, um, it doesn't die quickly on the skin. Like if anyone tells you you can get a henna design and a stain within five to 30 minutes, they're lying to you. Henna takes a few hours for it to develop on your skin naturally. And um, here's just a little, you know, camel here with a bunch of henna <laughs> leaves on its back. So about farmers growing henna in India, Pakistan, Iran, Yemen, and Morocco. So you'll have it in North Africa, the Middle East, and um, the Asian subcontinent. And who uses henna? Women use henna for weddings, celebrations, births, birthdays, and any other special occasion when they want to feel beautiful. Men use henna for their weddings and circumcisions, but not as much as women. So there's um some history behind all of that. And also sometimes people will handle their horses, donkeys, and dogs for celebrations as well, because kind of naturally uh, stains anything containing keratin, you know, like hair or dog hair, horse hair, things of that nature can be tied as well. And is henna sacred? Often I get asked that a lot of times, they're like, oh, you're Muslim or you're Hindu, or like, is, there, is it sacred practice to be using henna? It's not really sacred at all. It's just a cultural practice that a lot of people use. So if someone who isn't from this cultural religious background, it's not, you're not offending anybody if you want to use henna or receive henna. Um, people who are Hindu, Sikhs, Muslims, Jews, Christians, Buddhists, and some um, Animist religions have all used henna at one time or another. People use henna for Diwali, Noros, Eids, Purim, Passover, and other holidays, but henna is not part of the religious celebration. Henna is part of the social celebration of these holidays, as Christmas trees are social, not sacred celebration of Christmas. Right? So you're not offending anybody with wearing henna <laughs> on your body. And this is a quick little thing of how do you make henna paste. Um, fresh art quality henna powder. Don't use henna hair dye powders. And just, you know, mixing lemon juice and uh, covering the paste and letting it sit for the period of time that it takes for the henna to dye release. 
So you can see that it says let it sit for 12 hours. You can imagine the process of making natural henna sometimes is um, a bit overwhelming. My sister knows very well that sometimes it takes me up to two days to make henna paste for a certain event or a um, celebration that I have to go to. So it's not kind of like a quick overnight process. There's different hennas from different regions that have different dye release uh, rates. Like Moroccan henna is the fastest dye release rate. You can usually use Moroccan henna powder in about two to four hours. Some henna like Jamila henna from Pakistan takes anywhere from eight to 12 hours. And the Rajasthani henna is about anywhere from like eight to 14 hours. So depending on when you mix it and when the dye actually releases from the crushed leaves, which, is, um, which make up the powder, you can be able to use the henna paste in uh, decorating the skin. And these are things that some people add to henna. They add coffee, tea, sugar, and other things to henna paste after they mix it. Um, they'll get darker stains if they add a little tea tree essential oil or lavender essential oil to the henna paste. You can add sugar or dextrose to your henna paste to make it smoother. Also, it'll help it stick to the skin better. Um, to prevent it from flaking off faster and mixing enough liquid into the henna paste to make the texture of a stirred up yogurt. So the texture is very important to um, applying the henna to the skin. And um, you can see she's demonstrating there's different tools that different regions will use to apply henna to the skin. I use a cone. I prefer that method. But as you can see here to the right in the right image, this is a, it's like a Lorelock bottle. It's a, you know, like a decorating bottle with a little metal tip on there. Um, in other regions, um, this is uh, straining henna, but they also use uh, twigs and henna syringes. Like when my sister and I went to North uh, Africa, we took the Morocco for a few weeks. They actually use a blunt tip uh, syringe to apply the henna to your skin. So they take the tip off, suck up the henna piece, put the tip back on, and literally pipe the design on your skin. So the different places will use different tools of applying the henna to your skin, whether it's from a twig, a blunt edge syringe, a henna cone, or you know, like the bottles, the squeezy bottles with the metal plastic tips. And um, letting the paste dry on your skin and then sealing it. Henna has to stay on the skin undisturbed for several hours or overnight to make a dark stain. That's extremely important to realize that henna, because it's a natural product, it takes time for it to develop, just as you would plant a seed in the ground and wait for it to grow. Henna is the same way. It takes a while for that stain to be absorbed by the skin and also to develop on that skin. It's not going to happen very quickly. And these are just different ways of people that have sealed their henna to prevent it from flaking off if they want to wear it for a little bit longer before taking it off, like a lemon sugar sealant, a pump spray hair gel, or glue and glitter, or water mix. And, uh, Things that help make your henna stay darker besides leaving it on your skin for a longer period of time. Steam or heat will actually intensify the henna stain. It's not like essentially cooking it, but it will intensify the henna stain and give you a darker stain. You know, you see the toilet paper wrapped hand like a mummy. It's perfect for Halloween. <laughs> <laughs> but um, this is important. I want to share this with you. There's a handout everybody has about black henna. Henna is not black. And it, it ranges, as we've seen in the diagrams from before, anywhere from an orange to like a dark brown and red, like the thing people like a medjool date or an olive. Um, people use para, I can't even say it properly anymore, um, phenylidemine to make black henna, the PP date is what we call it. This can cause severe allergic reactions with blistering and a permanent scarring. If you were to Google black henna or black henna scarring, you'll see lots of reports, lots of pictures of these. Um, bad reactions that people get from chemically laden paste, whether it's the preservative, um, the high concentrations of PPD, which is like used in black hair dyes, that are put into the skin so people get an instant black stain on their skin, which is not natural henna. So I wanted to stress that importance to you, so if you guys know, you can share this information with your friends and family, if you guys are going to go get a henna design from someone, you ask the artist what's in their paste. I personally put in, it's natural henna powder, it's lemon juice, and essential oils. You know, best leave the henna on your skin three to four hours or as long as you humanly possibly can stand it to have it <laughs> on your skin to, to get a great to get a great stain. You won't get a stain within five to thirty minutes of wearing henna. You'll it'll be light at best. And um, you know, heed the warning: don't ever get a black henna tattoo. You only save natural red brown henna. So I think that would. Uh, it is just learn to be an artist, but there's a cool little design in the bottom of her foot, and. Um, I think that would uh, 
conclude this presentation for Henna. If, does anybody have any questions? Yes. If you have uh, sensitive skin, would that be a bad idea to have Henna? Not really. If you're allergic to any of the ingredients in the Henna paste, you could always let the Henna artist know. Like if anybody has citrus allergy, which are very rare, um, you could say, oh, if you, anybody would know if they had a citrus allergy, it'd be grapefruit, orange juice, lemons, anything like that that would upset your skin. Henna could also be made with distilled water. So you wouldn't actually get, um, you know, you wouldn't have to worry about it or the essential oils in, this, in the paste that help enhance the henna stain on the skin. The most thing that you would probably get would be like contact dermatitis. It would be a red um, reaction, which would be like as if, you know, say you got like a mosquito bite or something like yeah. that. It would be like a red raised, where the design was, and be like, oh, it's a little uncomfortable, but that's the most anybody has ever gotten from natural henna. No one's got any blistering or scarring from any natural henna paste. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, we actually did henna before at a renaissance festival, and it was in Arizona, so like after they did it, they put like the stuff on it, and they have you kind of like putting out that body part in the sun. It was so hot, it was usually the yeah. summertime, so it's actually kind of perfect, and I never realized why, I didn't really like say Why they sealed it, or they I made you sit out now, in the heat. now, because like, yeah, the heat yeah. seals There's it There's a science behind it, so any yeah, natural hand cool, artist would but, usually know. Yeah, I was wondering, like, so is the Moroccan then like more expensive, since it like works faster, and like it's done faster? Not generally, um, yeah. it's about availability, uh -huh. so the more, uh, say, a henna crop is available, the cheaper it would tend, it would tend to be. Yemen, Yemeni henna is actually the most expensive henna to get because it's hard to get out of the country. Oh. With the issues that are going on right now with the government and um, shipments being seized, wow. um, it's the most expensive henna to get and it leaves actually a very beautiful red, red color. So it's like the most wanted then? Or? Not necessarily. I think the ease of henna, like Yemeni henna is not very easy to work with. I've worked with lots of different kinds of henna over the years and I actually prefer anything from Moroccan henna is good for like a quick dye release. But I prefer like Indian or Pakistani kind of henna. Oh really? They're less stringy to work with. They leave a beautiful red to red maroon color uh, stain on their skin, and they're pretty consistent with like dye release. I don't have to worry about like, oh, is this henna going to work today or not? It's yeah. pretty consistent <laughs> across the board. Where I have Moroccan henna, it usually tends to be very gritty and hard to work with, mm -hmm. even though it stains the, the quickest. You have to like triple sift it, like grind it yeah. down very very fine and sift it out to get all those little particles out, so you can actually work with the do you get it like right out of the country or do they kind of bring it here and then it's like a No, we warehouse? ship directly from distributors oh, from different countries around the world, yeah. So people that we know and uh, talk to. Does it, did anybody else have any other questions? No? All right. So did you just want to quickly touch upon Malala's um, kind of Malala um, recently <laughs> won the Nobel Prize Award this year. Um, the interesting thing that she did with her henna, because of the education that she was trying to achieve, the rights for education for girls and women in her country, she would actually henna algebraic equations on her hand for her friends um, so that they could learn. And it was also kind of like a silent form of process saying that we're still learning. You can't take it off because henna does take time for it to fade. But I thought that was a really interesting and brave um, aspect and interesting use of using henna versus the traditional ways and methods of using henna mm -hmm. that people are used to. Um, it's a form of protesting. We're going to learn whether you tell us we can or cannot. And you know, putting those algebraic equations on our hands and um, you know other things that they were trying to learn, quiet and secret or anything like that. Is there anything else that you wanted to add about Malala? No, I, I think it seemed like it was a sign of unity among all the girls in the school. They all did the same thing as a way of connecting them as well. So um, thank you. And so we are, thank you so much for this for your presentation. Mm -hmm. we, um, so it looks like that we don't have, we have 25 slots, so it looks like we still have slots open if anyone's interested in having some henna application. Um, but we also have um, a variety of different cookies and frosting, because we talked about this, and just yeah. also talked about that um, we can do henna-esque um, designs on um, different sugar cookies, so I try to get a variety of different tips. So um, we'll have that as well for those of you who are waiting to have your henna application. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'll take the board where everyone has signed up for Hannah, and if you hadn't signed up, what I'll do is I'll call everybody by name, and I'll be just sitting in the back there, and I'll just be, you know, executing some quick designs, or if you had an idea, I can do a quick design for you. And there are the cookies lined up right over there that you can we'll attempt bring to Hannah you. yourself, mm -hmm. essentially. We'll bring, them, we'll bring them to you. Did anybody not sign up that wants Hannah?